Hey guys, Craig here. Um, another update on the M1070 then. Um, sorry, it's been a week over June. When I left you, I'd done all the inside of the cab. Um, I was waiting for the mask set to turn up. And then I cracked on and done all the winch um, assembly. And then I think I got to somewhere like here at uh, step 26. I've finished all of that now, um, and I've done all of 28, pretty much, there's just a couple of bits to finish off, and then I had to go back to the cab, okay, so, where I'm at at the minute then, with the, um, with these bits anyhow, on the actual cab itself, I've put in all the, oh, I've put in all the clear parts, um, that's all on now. Uh, the mask set's turned up, everything's all painted, so this is all complete. I've got the windows and everything in, um, and it's looking pretty good. Air filtration unit's all in, um, and I've still got these little pipes to go on, um, but I'm going to leave them out for a reason. A, it's a pain in the ass, and B, you're not going to see it anyway. Um, the reason for that is all that back area where the, the rear bench is is going to be um, stowage. It's going to be kit in that. Um, so that's pretty much where I'm at with the cab. So looking at the actual model itself then, we'll get that out of the way. Um, and this is where I'm at with it now. So as you can see, uh, it's progressed quite a lot since the last update. Um, so there's all the winch assembly. Uh, where's me little knife gun. If you remember uh, before, I've used um, photo wire for the actual winch cables, which look pretty awesome. What I forgot to do was get thinner stuff for the little winch here. So I've used the kit supplied um, string that comes with it. Doesn't look too bad to be fair. Um, a little bit furry here and there because it is string at the end of the day. And the idea with this one is I'm just going to glue it down um, to make it look as though it's got a little bit of weight on it. And that's just going to hang down as if they forgot to strap it up. There's a little bracket here that is supposed to clip on to. Similar sort of idea as this. Um, but I'm just going to leave it dangling as if they it's been forgotten to be strapped up. I'll be totally honest with you. Um, all this photo etch is a complete pain in the neck. Um, particularly on this piece here, uh, that's quite interesting to bend and shape. The other interesting piece is on the exhaust itself, getting this bent to the correct sort of like um, angle. What I actually ended up doing was using the other end of the exacto and bending it around that um, to get this sort of shape. But when it becomes interesting, is when you've got to get this piece on here. And then there's two sort of like bracing supports that come down the side. Complete nightmare. Because um, the bracing supports that come up and down here. Um, what I'm referring to, because you can't really see it once it's on. Is, where is it? Let's have a look. Um, these two pieces here. P-E-M-A-4. Um, that go down the sides here. They are literally hair thin. Um, so it's very, very interesting to try and get them on without actually messing it up. Um, so, succeeded. However, just expect this, these two pieces to be a complete ball ache. Uh, rest of the assembly, the exhaust went together pretty easy. Um, <coughs> this bracing support coming down the back, um, it's not very clear in the instructions how that goes. We'll go back. Um, let's look for the, where is it, it's once it's complete, oh, here you go, part F7, if you look at that, the, that is a flat part, it attaches here, this is an angled part, and if you follow the arrow, it shows you where it's supposed to fit onto here. Okay, but as you can see, 
or oh, not see actually is that's how it actually fits come on zoom in that's how it actually fits because of the angle of this um, bracket at the top here this piece okay so the instructions uh, again here tells you to put it on the front using the arrows but in actual fact it fits on I'm trying to do this upside down with a camera goes behind that piece and it fits pretty nicely okay these photo etch um, floor panels fairly easy nothing um, exceedingly hard about that one this piece here this um, little clip here is brass wire you get it supplied in the kit I had to drill the hole out but getting that shape is a complete nightmare and getting it on that bracket is also very interesting okay um, so just be cautious of this one this is very very fragile um, lost me Teddy with that a couple of times however we managed it we succeeded we got it on um, it is functional to an extent ie its moves but anyhow this side nothing really to report back another one that is a complete nightmare with this inside just in here these little brackets that hold these um, this wheel out this mud flap up are a complete nightmare okay because again they're really thin if you get it bent wrong or you stick it down in the wrong place let's try and get that focused a little bit better for you there you go um, it doesn't fit again I don't know if you'll be able to see how they um, attach but it's pretty much that end rib same on this side there's little um, hangers you can't really see it because they're up inside that little triangle bit up there um, let's try and get that so we can try and zoom in somewhere there's two little brackets up inside here that do the same job um, again you just got to be trial and error and just be a little bit cautious when you're sticking that onto the actual rig itself once it's on um, and you finish the assembly as this is now you have got some adjustments to make because um, you've got to wait for the back of the cab to be on to give you a distance but you can move this whole unit a couple of centimetres backwards or forwards so it is a little bit adjustable on the underside though um, you can see that panel just in here with all the nuts on that hits this part here um, so you've only like I said you've got a limited amount of movement with it um, but with that you've also got to be cautious of your tyre clearance as well move it too far back and your tyre won't fit um, rest of the cab then it's not stuck down but that's the cab all complete um, I've left this unpainted for a reason again you're not really going to see it once um, it's all painted up and that anyway um, with the mask set that's the mask set I've bought the um, Edward mask set um, I'm going to go for the dirty sort of like window look so it's going to have dust and muck all over here anyway um, but this this whole assembly here this cross frame is very very flimsy okay again with the instructions though when you're fitting it it kind of looks like this piece sits on top of the window frame it doesn't it sits behind it and same on the back wall it actually slots in behind the back wall so this whole thing should be flush for the um, brass roof to go on um, took a little bit to figure that out however that's how it goes just behind the window and just behind the actual back frame or back wall itself um, got the little brass pieces that go on the front here um, which is what the bonnet sits on to stop it um, going too far back so the bonnet actually sits quite nicely onto there as you saw before it fell off um, that's just rough but it will kind of sit there on the brass um, and that's pretty much where I'm at with that 
So this side, just to give you a look at the cab on this side, um, that's pretty much the same as the other. For the windows, I've used Formula 560. I've used that, which is canopy glue, um, to glue the windows in, and then they dry clear, so you don't get all that mucky glue all over your windows and that anyway. Um, these ones and these ones actually click into the recess. Um, so if you're using super glue or any other glue, you've got to actually physically try and get the thing in um, for it to click. Um, at which point you probably get loads of glue everywhere as it um, compresses into the space. Under the actual cab itself then, um, you can see the exhaust and everything that's been fitted in there. Uh, there's not much on this side except for the, um, the basket uh, just at the front of the door there, storage unit. Um, with mine on this, it shows you when you're fitting the cab together that you've got a load of um, cables that are supposed to go through. Um, I haven't bothered with this because um, you're just not going to see it, to be perfectly honest. It sits at the front of the cab on the driver's side. Um, so if you look at the driver's side and where those cables actually sit, in between there where the air filter, the fuel filters and that are. What we're talking about is a couple of black cables that run in between those two filters in between the steps. Um, it was too much of a ball ache for me to be perfectly honest. So due to the fact that you can't really see them, um, I've left those out. It's just over engineering for the sake of over engineering. Um, and that's pretty much it. On these pieces here, um, G14, that's self-explanatory. The two pins on the back of the cab um, sit down here, locates the back of the cab to the chassis. These two little pieces at the front of the cab, um, make sure that you use a good glue for them because it's literally the outside edges, um, this outside edge and this edge here slot onto these gaps um, let's try and get that zoomed in Slits, sits into that gap sits into that gap there so you haven't really got a lot of plastic to glue down but it's holding the whole weight of the cab <clears throat> um, and you've got to make sure they're straight glue them on squint and they're just not going to fit onto the chassis um, <clears throat> the reason for that being uh, if you look there those pins that I'm telling you about, what that's telling you is it locates into the top of these struts here. Um, if they're squint, it won't fit. That's the locating pins for the um, back of the cab. So you can't really get the cab wrong. Um, unless you glue all three all three of those pins squint, the cab will sit pretty much square. Okay. Uh, so that's where I'm at with the, the actual truck itself now. Something to note with this is it's actually starting to become very heavy in weight. Um, it is actually quite a heavy build uh, there's a lot of plastic on it and there's starting to be a lot of metal so from here then it's pretty much going to be finishing the roof off getting the brass on the roof and all the accessories for the roof I can't put that on until I've filled in the spaces now with all the stowage and that that's going to go in there empty bottles, rubbish and all that sort of crap that you get in vehicles um, I've got the wing mirrors to put on on this doors, the window wipers, um, the mask set, and all all this sort of like photo etch it goes on the front to make the top of the roof. Um, step twenty two is done. Uh, we just haven't done the wheels, done the bonnet, and um, the horns and everything. Just to show you that. Uh, the inside of there is how it fits. That's the horn um, sitting behind here. Some on the photo etch here. It says that you've got to bend these pins, but these pins on this photo etch are absolutely tiny, and it's very easy to bend the whole mesh. Um, but it's supposed to be a recessed gap. However, I've just stuck mine on flat, as you can see, uh, and it's left the recess anyway, um, so it doesn't look overly odd or daft anyhow um, so yeah that, that's how I did that and it looks alright you know 
Um, photo etch grill on the front only goes on one way. It is shaped. You can't get it wrong. Um, and that's pretty much the the bonnet covered. We've done all the winch and everything now. So we are now looking at. I've got a couple of pieces to finish here. These little um, support legs. I've actually built the legs. Uh, that's that's them there. I just got to put all the little photo etch straps and everything on. Uh, I've got the identification marker to go on the side of the bonnet on this side, which is this, which builds up to the plate on the side. I've got the back of the exhaust to put on. Once the cab's actually glued down, I'm going to glue that in. Uh, a couple of bits of photo etching here. Little um, bracing supports. That step's done. I've got this to put on. Um, as you can see here, you've got the bracing supports here that glue to the chassis. And these little bits of photo etching here are what hold that up on the other side. That will locate behind the fifth wheel. Then we are pretty much done, and then it's just wheels, I think. What's this? What are we looking at here? Uh, we've got some lights to go on the back on that one, and then it's the mud flaps for the rear, rest of the tyres, and then that's it. We're pretty much done. So not far off. Um, so we're cracking on. My tip would be, at this point, I haven't glued the cab down to the chassis. Um, I'm not going to, so I'm going to take the, the cab off, and then I can spray the entire chassis in one go, um, and get all those little nickly hard-to-fit pieces um, done. I can also turn the cab upside down, get the bottom of that sprayed and painted up, um, so it will be quite easy, rather than trying to get a brush and an airbrush in there, making a, a complete mess. Um... So that's what I would, what I'm going to do. I'd probably suggest doing the same, because um, if you try and do this whole thing in one go, um, there's going to be lots of places you miss. There's lots of little nooks and crannies and all sorts of stuff going on uh, with the actual truck itself. Um, but there's, you've got lots of options depending on how you're going to build it. Depends how you're going to paint it. Um, I've glued the door shut, so. The interior of my cab isn't really essential, particularly all the little air tubes and that that you can't see because all the doors are shut. You can have all the windows open if you want. You can have this window open, that window open, that window open. Um, this door open, shut. Same on the other side. Um, you can have your bonnet closed, bonnet open, winches out, winches in. There's just so many options you can use with this thing. Even down to the exhaust, you can have that open if it's running, have it down if it's shut the little flap on top of the exhaust um you've just got a phenomenal amount of movement with this this build so you've got a lot of planning to think about prior to actually getting to the stages um and that will dictate how you're going to paint the thing in the end um, but mine's just going to be static parked up everything's shut up stowage in the in the cab so it looks as though it's just parked up um i'm i don't think i'm going to do a diorama for it because it's just so big um, the truck on its own to give you some idea of scale and size. That's a truck, obviously, and that's a 135 Panther next to it. Um, you can see the height of it without the wheels on. It's actually bigger than the Panther. Um, it's considerably longer than the Panther. Um, and it's just about as wide as the Panther. Um, it's just a mutant. And then you've got the trailer to think about on the back of that. It's... Uh, a lot of planning as as I say. Anyhow, I'm rambling now, so moving on with the project, I shall give you your next update once I've done with the roof and everything. I'm gonna have to do a bit of painting on that first before I stick it down. Um and then I'll just give you an update on the next bit. Again, any questions, any um what do you call it? Any questions, comments, anything you want to say, um leave it in the comments section below. Um, and failing that, I'll speak to you guys shortly and give you another uh, progress report. Thanks guys and speak to you soon.